There's a roundabout. Roundabouts are fun when you're in a car like this, but less fun when you're behind a BMW X1 doing 12 miles an hour. Get out of the way. Whee! RS7 has been sold. I am starting to look for a sports car again. That was one of the big reasons letting the RS7 go. I wanted something sportier again. I really want something with a manual transmission, but at the same time, I also want to have an exotic car again. I used to have an R8. I experienced the exotic ownership type of thing with the i8. R8 was great. That didn't last quite that long, but I am on the hunt for a car again, and there are many, many options. So get ready for a couple videos watching me be indecisive and uh, get swayed by my friends because all of them want me to get something different. We're going to drive a couple cars that represent uh, what I would like to buy. I've driven every single car that I'm going to talk about potentially buying. I don't have access to every single one, but it's close enough. Regardless, the first thing here, we have a GT350R. You guys have seen this car many times. It's owned by my good friend Matt. Uh, this R has been, we autocrossed it. He's driven it thousands and thousands of miles. And I've spent a good amount of time with it. And the GT350 and 350R has been a car that I've wanted for quite a long time. I came close to buying one a, long, a while ago, but they want a dealer markup of anywhere between ten dollars to $20,000, and I just refused to pay that, ended up buying the R8 instead. But now it is back on the table, much to Matt's excitement, although he has gotten a little bit impatient with trying to convince me over and over again, because he's probably gone three or four rounds of trying to get me to buy one of these things. The other options I have been considering include an Audi R8, V10, possibly an S-Tronic, uh, a first-gen gated manual V8 coupe with a B-Rogue built turbo kit. And you'll remember from the B-Rogue built vlog uh, where we checked out some of the twin turbo cars they're building, Alex Lambo Jesus really, really wants me to do that. He thinks it'd be a good idea. I, it's appealing to other ideas. I've wanted a McLaren for years. The 12C has been one of my dream cars since it first came out, but that has a host of other concerns and uh, considerations that I'll talk about in the McLaren specific video. Today is about the Shelby. Here we go. It's sitting in the garage. Matt's 350R. So tell me, Matt, why should I buy a GT350? You already know. <laughs> I've been trying. Tell, tell them. I've been trying to convince him for years. Literally. And we met because of the car. Yes. And you're like, I want to try and review your car. I'm like, yes. fine, sure, yes. drive it. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, it's. I can't put it into words. It's awesome. <laughs> I think also some of it is his exasperation because you got so close when I started inquiring that one time. I actually called three or four dealers, and then when they all wanted markup, I got pissed. You paid markup on this because you, it was in severely was, high demand. It was the market. It was the, the market at the time, and. It's given the fact that you want to keep it forever, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. You could afford it. You wanted the car, and you thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed I've it. I've gotten that ten grand out of it. Yes, for sure. so, yes, for sure you have. <laughs> um, I've actually gotten a little bit of that ten grand out of it too. <laughs> and yes, so I'm going to talk about it when I'm in the car. But I have many thoughts on 350 versus 350R. You obviously chose the 350R, so I should choose. Uh, I would say I'd lean towards the R. Yeah, that's just me. Yeah, you want something special. Mm -hmm. You want something that has a little bit more. Not exotic feel, but it's it's got that look. Yeah, there, it's something a little different. I mean, yeah, you can make a 350 look like an R, but, but it's that's like taking I, an R8 V8 and putting uh, V10 badges on it. Some people don't do that, but, yeah, or don't feel a difference between them. But I actually do because I've I've driven them enough that I think I can feel a difference. Oh well, look here. But yeah, <laughs> this is oh this is actually based off this actual car too. The shirt. My shirt, 350R, so uh, I'm going to take it for a spin, thank you. Mm -hmm. I haven't driven a 350 in a while, it's been quite a while. But the last I've driven... time you drove it was the autocross. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was, yeah, we autocrossed it. Mm -hmm. I, spent a time, I spent time in tons of them, from regular 350s to development cars when I was still an engineer at Ford, to Kent's uh, first year track pack car. It's an amazing vehicle, and it does fulfill what I want to have with a manual car. It is obviously manual transmission only, so it does fulfill that requirement. Flat plane crank, 5.2 NA V8, that makes 526 horsepower, and revs to 8250 RPM. And this one, Matt, how many miles are you at? Uh, a little over 28,000. Nice. Coming up on that 30,000, so this has been properly, properly driven. One of the big concerns of the 350R is the wheels. So the 350R from the factory 
comes with carbon fiber wheels, which are amazing. They're very light. They really help the handling of the vehicle, but they're also really expensive. Matt, how much do they cost? About four grand from the dealer. Four grand from the dealer per wheel, not a set, per wheel. So if you break slash crack one of those, you are gonna be very, very unhappy. So therefore, you are running Signature SV... 902s. SV 902s, these are forged wheels. They and look the really same good. R spec too. So it's 19 by 11 up front, 19 and 11 and a half in the rear. Okay. So that is something. If I got a 350R, I would do that, which is almost like counterintuitive because, like, part of the specialness of the R is you get carbon fiber wheels and it handles better because of that. But then you have to take the wheels off because you don't want to damage the wheels. But with a forged wheel, you're only weighing about maybe two pounds different, one pound. Okay. It depends. So they're very close. Yeah. So I don't notice a big difference. I also changed the tires. Yes. So I went from a Cup 2, which the majority of the time you'll have a lot of tram lining. But and if the weather even remotely thinks about raining, you're going to like That's have a bad time. That's why control is your friend. <laughs> Dude, I've driven Cup 2s in the rain. It's not enjoyable. No, so I, you I, have too. I've done it too. It's not fun. It's not fun. <laughs> I went to the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. PS4S. So that is a consideration. Look at those giant Brembo brakes. It is truly track capable. AWE switchbacks. So basically it's a module that allows you to change the valves with a remote rather than on the dash. So, so what that means on cold start, normally it like cycles through the valves, but open it all the way up. This is a 350R cold start with the valves. Yeah, you do. All right, let me crawl back here in the garage. Opening and closing. Yep, you can hear the valves actuating. So they're open. All right, let's cold start it. Oh my god! That right there is almost enough of a reason. There you can talk. Oh, there we go. Oh, I can talk. That there, that exhaust sound is enough of a reason to buy one of these. God, I love the way that voodoo sounds. That's fun. <laughs> so, Look at these. Before I head out to take Matt's car for a spin, I gotta show you something really cool. His sister Marissa made this. Marissa, say hi. Hello. So this is what, something spray painted. What do you call it? Uh, Multi-layered stenciling technique with spray paint. That is a very, we should make that into an acronym. Okay. But this is the final result of his GT350, GT350R and it looks epic. I love that Marissa, you're talented and I'm having some made for my cars. This is very clearly an i8, yeah. which is gonna be awesome, thank you. Absolutely. Got the logo there already. I cannot wait to show you guys the final result. That is of the Shelby, and it's on canvas, all spray paint with like, look at the detail. This is crazy, she's got an X-Acto knife, she's cutting out stencils. So if you want one of these made, she does do commissions. I will put the email below, email Marissa, cause I cannot wait to get a bunch of mine put up on my wall, it's gonna be awesome. And with that, let's go take a Shelby for a drive. been driving the 350R for like five minutes and I already remember why I love this car so much. It's really the engine. That engine is so special. The Voodoo 5.2 liter flat plane crank V8 naturally aspirated revving to over 8,000 RPM, over 500 horsepower and the sounds it makes are just amazing. I love the sounds. I'm still letting the engine warm up so no red line runs yet but just driving around casually normally, it's so exciting. You don't need to be going full out to truly enjoy this vehicle. I've always liked Mustangs. Uh, my first car that I ever bought myself out of college was a Boss 302 Laguna Seca. My dad has been an engineer at Ford since I was a little kid, so we go to take your child to work day, and I saw the Mustangs and everything, and they were always cool to me. And something about them just enjoyed Mustangs and owning a Boss 302 was a fun experience until I very quickly sold it afterwards. The first time I ever drove a GT350, I think was Matt's car. I don't think I'd driven one at work before yet, but after that, subsequently, I drove a bunch more. Uh, immediately jumping to the top of the line R was kind of amusing because the regular one, I was like, it's nice, but it seems to be missing a little something. The actual differences between the R and the non R, there actually are some. It's more than just wheels and a big wing. The tuning on this vehicle, in terms of suspension tuning, the traction control, stability control tuning is unique to the R. The more aggressive aerodynamics, a bigger front splitter, a bigger rear wing, 
power is exactly the same. The engine and transmission are the same. There are some slight functionality differences, I believe, from what I've been told by Ford engineers and the engine itself for the R, uh, related to how oil passageways are designed and stuff for the higher G loads that the track focused R is supposed to handle. Um, it is more track focused, so the cooling, obviously the brakes, not the brakes, the uh, the wheels, carbon fiber wheels are lighter, less unsprung weight. From the factory, it comes with Cup 2 tires, which are gonna be more sticky and aggressive. So like I said earlier, I really wanna own a manual transmission car again. I really miss having a manual car in the garage where I can just take out and drive it whenever. Prior to this weekend, it's actually been like, probably two, two to three months since I've driven a manual transmission car. It's just been autos for a while. And while the dual clutches and latest torque converter autos are really, really good and some of them are really fast. Just something more fun about rowing your own gears. So the GT350, why this over a Camaro ZL11 LE? Why over a Hellcat? Why over, uh, I mean, BMW M3, Porsches? There's a lot of options out there, but I think it's just the biggest naturally aspirated flat plane crank engine ever made. The fact that it's a Shelby, the GT350R is rare and limited. I've wanted one for a long time. Almost bought one a couple years ago, but dealers wanted markup, mentioned that earlier. And now I think it is possibly time. The only concern I have right now, not concern, but all the consideration I have is I also at the same time want something that's a little more exotic. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I want a car that puts a big smile on my face. Does a McLaren put a smile on my face? Yes. Does an Ari put a smile on my face? Yes. Does a Porsche GT3? Yes. But so does the 350R. So it absolutely is one of my top three considerations of what car I want to buy next. Cost is a consideration too. Uh, I don't have unlimited money to buy whatever car I'm looking for next. I have a budget and this budget could either include just one really nice exotic or a sports car like a 350R that's manual and maybe a cheaper older exotic or another cheaper sports car for a more variety of content, more different choices to drive. But when I think about that option too, I also have to consider the fact that do I have enough time right now to drive all these cars? I work many hours uh, and often I'm very fortunate to have press cars from manufacturers that I'm filming videos with and or um, sometimes traveling too. So, and I, I have a truck to daily drive and my commute isn't that long. So can I, sorry spend time between multiple, multiple vehicles. I'm also not sure there. I will talk about my other uh, thoughts about the McLaren and the R8 in other videos, but one of the reasons that this 350 or 350R is appealing is at the end of the day, it's price. These are a much more affordable vehicle. When brand new, they were in the, uh, I think 60, they started maybe around 50 for the non-R, right up to about 70, $75,000 for an R car. And now they've been out for a couple years. I don't personally want the early, early years because the Voodoo engine had a couple issues, oil consumption, um, People, some people have had to put new motors in them, but later on, they started getting better and better. So I'd look for a later model year car, but even then, for about $60,000, you can find yourself a well taken care of, low mileage GT350R. For even less than that, for in the 45 to $50,000 range, there are many non R GT 350. So a 2017 or 2018 later model year cars. And those are very, very compelling numbers to get yourself into a 500 horsepower track capable sports car. There's a roundabout. Roundabouts are fun when you're in a car like this, but less fun when you're behind a BMW X1 doing 12 miles an hour. Get out of the way. Whee! Ah, uh, Matt knew this was gonna happen. I was gonna drive it and it would sell me on it again. He knew that was gonna happen. Now, is the 350 the most refined, luxurious car? No, it's more for fun driving. The build quality has definitely improved. The interior has improved to an extent compared to previous Mustangs. My Boss 302, now that I've experienced more cars, especially owning some higher end vehicles, wow, was that interior a disaster. So bad. The light, the center uh, interior like light cover, I think is exactly the same from that previous gen Mustang, but everything else is new. We've got newer sync touchscreen, which works fine, has Apple CarPlay. Uh, I've got electronics pack in this R here. So we have climate control. We have a sound system. 
Um, it has launch control, you can have active exhaust on it, it even has cruise control. Adaptive dampers allow you to change the stick stiffness of the magnetic ride. There's a little heads up display for the uh, shifting. Um, it, the lights illuminate as you get closer to red line. The R also doesn't have back seats, but I don't need back seats at all. Only time I ever used the back seats in something like my i8 was to put like a backpack in there or like groceries or stuff like that. So it really does fit the bill for not a massive amount of money. This is a very nice car for the money and I think they'll hold value decently. Uh, I'm sure people think that for many, many cars that they own, but the 350R is factually a rather limited run. They made a lot fewer of these than the regular 350. And if you guys can sense this trend, I'm kind of sort of talking myself out of a non-R 350 into the full GT 350R. I fully embrace and admit and understand that I, myself, just the way I am, I like having the top tier of the car. I like knowing that I have the best spec of whatever is available. Because there was an RS7, I wanted to own the RS7 because it had all the things on it. I didn't really want to own an S7. It's the way I am. Uh, there's no nothing against those cars. I, I very seriously consider the 350 um, because it's still a great car and it's a lower price. But oh, other big thing I definitely need to talk about is the exhaust difference between a 350R and a 350. Listen to that. The 350R sounds the best and it is not by accident. <laughs> the 350R has a resonator delete from the factory. You could do that to your 350 to make it sound exactly the same, but the R from the factory doesn't have the resonator there and it just sounds a bit louder, a bit more extreme, a little more cracks and pops with the 350R and that is half of the experience. The auditory, the sounds this thing makes is half of the fun. So that does make it better, but that is easily, remin uh, you can remedy that with the 350 and do a resonator delete. Wheels, carbon fiber wheels, I would have to put forged wheels on either one. I'd wanna upgrade the wheels on a 350, I'd probably do it on this, so that's a toss up. Tires, I would have to get Michelin Pilot Super Sports or PS4S for this because Cup 2s do not work in the rain. If it gets a little bit chilly out, they become rock hard and that's not good either, it's not safe. Um, the regular GT350 does come with just Super Sports or PS4S now, I think. So that's more all around summer tire. A lot of considerations, but in the realm of a manual fun sports car, I think I have completely eliminated everything else. There was E92 M3 on that list. Uh, Porsche, maybe like a Cayman GT4. There were, what else was on there? I actually looked at some B8.5 Audi S4s. I enjoyed mine, the supercharged V6. I was like, oh, what if I could do one of those again? Um, gated manual R8 V8, some of those with decent miles on them are also becoming lower price. I mean, the price of a 350R, you get one of those. But I think the overall combination of everything that it has the tech, it has the engine, it has the handling. I love the way they look. I love the way they sound. That is why I really think I should get a GT350 or a GT350R. If I'm being completely honest with myself, I am leaning towards the R car right now. The ultimate debate there is, is it worth spending the extra about $10,000? Is the rarity and what you get, like I mentioned and covered, um, worth that money? So comment below. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. Uh, part of my vehicle buying decisions are driven in part by the kind of videos I can make with it because I enjoy sharing the ownership perspective, uh, what kind of things I go through, the, the cost, what I like about it, what I don't like about it because that's what I'm spending my own money on and if nobody wants to watch that, I'd have to really, really love the car to still do that. Uh, honestly, I think I love the 350R enough that if nobody wanted to watch it, I would still buy it because ultimately it makes me happy. So there you have heard it. I am officially considering a 350R or a 350. Oh man, oh man. Thanks again to Matt for letting me drive it. Comment below what you think I should get. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.